This is being recorded, so if you need to come back and refer to it once we get it released out, then everybody will be able to come back and check in on it. Tonight, we're going to be going a little bit deeper into a uh, website. Uh, this is where you really gain the capability of customizing your site and making it more, um, more reflective of your personality or your brand, so to speak. So as usual, we always start at the hub. Again, I'm going to point out the technical support link up here in the upper left, as well as the ARP help widget where you can open a ticket. But if all else fails, send me an email to support at theamericanrealty.tech, and I will be able to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Um, from here, the hub, we're going to go to my website. And by this point, everybody should already have their website created, uh, at least in the minimal form. So we're going to go and we're going to jump right into some customization issues. But first thing I'm going to do is ask if there are any questions from the previous two trainings on websites. Are there any issues that you've noticed, anything that you need me to ask their tech support at Moxie or anything like that? Okay, well, I'll jump right into the new stuff then. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna come over here and if you'll look again, when you're in the website admin tool, you've got three primary areas. The first area is here in the center, which is content. It's gonna be where you're gonna see the different things that are available that you, um, that you go to on the navigation bar, which is over here to the left. Across the top, you have like a command bar, where it shows you as the person logged in. Uh, it shows here your homepage, appearance information. This is for your SEO, which we will not cover. Um, SEO is an entirely deep topic that uh, I would recommend watching some YouTube videos on uh, because there are some good videos on SEO and search engine optimization that I would recommend watching. Again, over here, you've got visit site. If you click on visit site, it will take you to the way your website is currently set up. But tonight, we're going to be jumping in and we're going to be going to this little navigation option over here called site pages. Now, if you click here on the words site pages or here on all pages, you go to the same place. And that is a list of all the pages that are currently um, produced for your website. Um, you will notice each site has a series of options or each page has a series of options underneath it. But let's first look at the obvious. You'll notice that some of these pages are way over to the left and some of them are indented. If they are over to the left, then they will be a menu bar option on your website. So, for example, you see here home properties, buying and selling about me. If I look at my website up here at the top, if they were in the right color, you'd see home properties, buying and selling and about me. So if you're looking at this organization of your site pages and a page is over to the far left, it will be a menu item at the top of your website. Now, if it is indented, it will be a sub menu item under the item that is furthest to the left, just above it. So here you will see properties and then underneath properties, you will see these various options. So if I come over here and I look at properties, here are the sub listing options here. Now you'll notice there are only three that show, but if I look here, there are many more than three. One thing you'll notice, though, are four of these have the word hidden at the end of them. That means these pages exist, but they're not where people can navigate to them. So in order to have one of those pages be visible, you have to click show, and that will unhide it and make it visible on your website in your menu. So if I wanted to make this sold listings visible, I would click show. You'll notice here it says navigation updated. 
I'm good with everything I did. So ideally, if I come back here, I refresh my website. Anytime I make a change, I've got to refresh, come back under properties. Now I've got four options. Okay. So you'll notice hidden options are not visible on the menu at the top of your website. Okay. You'll have other options here for each page, which are edit, delete, or view. View simply takes you to that particular page. It shows you that page to let you see what it looks like. Edit will take you into that page where you can make changes. Excuse me, I closed the wrong screen there. Sorry about that. So if I'm on a page that's not like one of those, say it's uh, buying and selling tips, if I click edit, here's the information that appears on that website or on that particular page. So if I wanted to make modifications to the buying and selling tips, I could come in here and edit these, changing this information as I need to, to make it more uh, fit my brand, in other words. So just know that you can do that. Once you're done editing, you can click Save. It will save it. And then to get back to pages, you just click back on all pages and you'll go back to where you were. Okay. So you'll notice now that there's a series of pages that we've prepared for our website. But say that we want to create a page that is new for our website. We've got a couple of different ways we can do that, but you can click to the add new over here to the far left in the navigation window, or you can click add new at the top of the all pages window. So I'm gonna click add new, and it gives me the ability to select what type of page I want to create. Moxie's been kind enough to set up certain types of pages. So a lot of the back end stuff is already done. We just have to complete the information, fill in the gaps and do that. But there are some instances where we want to create a completely custom page for our website. And then we would select custom page and then select submit. Okay, when you first get to the add new page page, a little redundant, sorry, the add new page page, you're going to see add title, you're going to see text editor, and you're going to see another tab for page builder, and you're going to see various other things down below. Over to the right, you're going to see the current status of this particular page. It is in draft status. It is visible to the public currently, but only if we publish it when we are done. We can hide it from the navigation menu. This gives us SEO recommendations about readability and about SEO in general. Yoast is good about checking the readability of our, of our pages to say, hey, this looks pretty good, or hey, you need to do a little work on this. Just know, take all that with a grain of salt. It's controlled by an algorithm. So it may say something is not good or not readable when it very possibly is perfectly readable. Then another option you have is to save the draft. If you save it as a draft, it is not visible on your website. That means that it is in a state where you can come back and edit it. All right, that's all it is. It's like writing a, um, a draft paper, the first draft, and you save it. You don't want to go back and, and put it on the page yet. You're just going to save it, come back and edit it later. You'll use save draft. You can also preview what you have done on the current page by clicking the preview button. And if you're happy with the page looks, with the way the page looks, then publish always makes it where it can go live over our website. But some things you've got to know right off the top. If you add a page title and begin here in the text editor, then you're going to need to continue in the text editor. However, if you click on Page Builder, 
it's going to overwrite everything that you've already done in that other page. So you need to make a decision from the very beginning. Do you want to do this in text or do you want to do this in the page builder? The page builder is probably going to be what everybody needs to use to create their pages. It gives you more tools, requires less knowledge of website creation. You don't have to know anything about HTML or uh, cascading style sheets or any of that fun stuff. All right. So you're going to want to probably use the page builder. Now, the first time you use the page builder, you're going to get this little acknowledgement. Looks like this is the first time using page builder. Would you like to see a tour? For the sake of brevity, I'm going to say no thanks. And that opens the page builder, which is now ready for us to create a page. Now, if you'll notice across the top, it keeps our menu in here that we've already got active. Um, and since I created it with gray with light text, it's still going to stay the same way on this page. But you'll also notice that there's a different um, area here that says drop a row layout or module to get started. This is totally a blank slate. You have the ability to pick different options to go in here. Now, if you click the plus sign, upper right beside the done, if you click that, it's going to open what I call your textbook or excuse me, your toolbox. The advantage of the toolbox is it's kind of got everything you're going to need to use lumped right there together. Now it's broken down into different parts and we're going to look at each one of these parts individually. Across the top, you have four tabs, modules, rows, templates, and saved. Okay, each of those tabs opens up a different group of things beneath it. So let's start with modules, reading left to right like we normally do. Here it says group, standard modules. And then it has a list of things down here that you can use to add to your website. You can do audio, you can do a heading, you can do photos, a separator, which is just a line, button, HTML, if you do have HTML code that you want to enter, you can type it by clicking, dragging that into the, um, the workspace and then entering your HTML, uh, your text editor, video, content slider, gallery, icon, icon group, et cetera. All right, so you've got a lot of different ways to customize your page just from these particular modules that they consider standard modules. If I click this drop down, you'll notice I've also got page builder add-ons, which is another series of add-ons that can be used within the page builder. They've also got widgets, which is a series of widgets that you can use within the page builder. Okay, what each widget does is a completely Different reason to have another class to go into some of those details. What I'll try to do is cover those widgets in little brief snippets that we can release out a couple of minutes at a time to make it a little easier for everybody. But going back to our standard modules, to add a module into this area, we simply click on it and drag it into our window. What that does is it adds it into our window, you'll notice now I've got a little blue box here, but I've also got an audio window open with some certain settings or parameters that I need to fill out. The audio type may be a link, and then this is where I put the link to the audio type. If you'll remember from previous classes, we said that if you're doing a website, don't do autoplay, because you might have somebody looking at the website at work, they click on a page and suddenly your page starts blaring over their speakers, which are too loud. And suddenly everybody in their cubicle area is looking at them like they're nuts. So please do not autoplay music. It makes it very hard for people to secretly look at stuff while they're at work when they're shopping for a house. You've also got loop, which basically means when that particular audio clip stops, it will loop back and play it again. 
I don't know if you've ever been a place where they loop music or sound bites over and over and over again, but it gets extremely annoying. So I would advise not looping. One night I was at a Waffle House and there was a kid in there and one of the servers had started playing Baby Shark on repeat over and over and over. And I swear we heard that song 50 times before we finished our meal. So just know looping is not a good thing. All right. Once you've got it the way you want it with general, you can click over on advanced. And this gives you a little more control about where that particular audio player is. Is it spaced over from the right? Is it more to the left? You can control the pixels that it is in or down or up or over by entering different numbers in here. And as you enter the different numbers, you can watch where your audio player shifts and see how it works. You've also got the ability to control animation. If you do animation, you've got various options here. And the reason I'm covering these particular options is because these are very common throughout all the different modules that you can drag into your website. You've also got HTML elements that you can touch base here if you're that knowledgeable on those. And you've also got the export import. So if you've got a particular setting or style that you've exported, you can import it here and it will make it the same as other pages. So that gives you the ability to uh, copy your settings or copy your styles and to standardize things across your website. But once you're done, you click save or save as, and it will save that audio player. You'll notice here, this is where my audio player is. Now the audio player, if you want to see what that looks like, you then have to click done, save it as a draft, come back to the page that you're on, which I believe should be post 11, view it. And you'll notice that you don't see anything. The thing is here with audio, unless it's attached to a button or something else, you're not going to see it here. That's why it makes it very difficult unless you're adding sound to a particular element in your page. If you are adding sound in the background, which I highly discourage, that's going to be something that's going to need to autoplay, and we don't want to see that. So, all right. So let's go back to our page that we were on. Anytime we come back to a page that we've been editing in the page builder, it will default to the page builder selection, and it will say page builder is currently active for this page and give you the option to load that page builder. All right, if you decide you want to click on text editor, that's going to undo your page builder stuff. So just know that you need to stay in one or the other, preferably for ease of use. But say we launch page builder again, it's going to bring us right back to where we were moments before. And you'll notice when we hover over the certain areas, it highlights the things we've drug in. But if we click a plus, we get our toolbox back. Okay, so with this, you can drag in a gallery. Okay, it puts your gallery in there. Until you start adding content to these various things, they're not going to be visible. But when you do a gallery, it gives you the ability, okay, we're going to do it as collage, or we're going to do it as thumbnails, however you want to do it. The source is going to be your media library or something else within your um within your site. I think it's got a connection to SmugMug, which I've never used. You've also got the ability to add your photos, choose your photo size, whether it shows captions. When you click on one, whether it opens it in a light box, which means it'll pop it out and make it bigger by itself. And it will ask what the light box size would be, which would be 1024 by 1024, which is a good size light box. So when you add those things, just know that you really need to add content to get them to show up. If I've clicked off of one, I've saved it, and I notice I need to go back and add something to it, you'll notice when I click on the particular blue box, 
I've got this little wrench that says gallery settings. Same way on the audio, audio settings. So if I wanna go back and make a change, I can go to gallery settings and I'm gonna add a photo or two just so it'll be visible. Okay, so I've added, a, I've added an image. I can come over here and I can put alternate text. Now you see that alt text. How many of you have ever loaded a web page and for some reason the picture didn't load? It just loaded a little funny box that, that looked like a picture, like a hand-drawn picture or something. If you have alt text defined, that alt text will show up along with that little box. So you can put under construction image in there and when that pops up it'll pop up that little fake box and the under construction image if it doesn't pull up that big image you can also title it caption it put a description depends on how well organized you want to be here you can also link an image from somewhere else in the web and put different categories in here if you want to classify things that much all you really need to do is put some alt text and then click add to gallery. Click update gallery. And now you'll notice that I have an image here. So if I come in here again and I add another photo. Have the same options. Click add to gallery. Update gallery. Then I've got my second there. Now you'll notice we're doing these in a collage. So it's going to collage them together. If they're different sizes, it'll make, make that handy. Or thumbnails, which can be different. They're smaller. Okay. Everything is visually driven nowadays. So I would recommend choosing the larger of the options because people are going to shop with their eyes first. And that's going to be an important thing when they're looking at your site. All right, so once I've got it where I want it, I can click save. Now I've got this here as my gallery. Just like I did with those two, I can click or drag any of these things in there. And I would recommend going in, creating a page in the, in the page builder and dragging in all these different tools and looking at how they look. That's gonna be the easiest way for you to learn what you need and what is going to give you the look you want. Any questions about the standard modules or this modules particular area of the toolbox? Okay, the next option we have are rows. Now this is kind of a classification process that you can use before you get started with some of the other stuff. I really don't know why they put modules first when really templates or rows should have been first. But just know that you can come to rows and you can drag in, say, I want three pictures. I can drag this in anywhere on my page and it's gonna put in three blue boxes. And each of these blue boxes, I can put in different things by editing, go into my column settings, and doing the different things here that I can change and set and all that kind of fun stuff. But another thing that these little blue boxes do for us is you can take any of these modules and drag them into one of those blue boxes. And that suddenly becomes another pocket for you to have things on your website. All right. So say you don't want to create something that it will create for you automatically by adding pictures. You want to have more control over it because here you may want a picture. Here you may want text. So what you can do is you can come up here to the plus, come down to your text editor, drag it into that second blue box, and then it gives me that box where I can type any text that I want to put in there. Then on this third one, I've got the option. I can come in and click my little plus sign again and say, I want to put a video on this side. I can drag a video in there. 
I can embed a video. It will ask for the information about embedding, embedding a video. Um, here, whether you want the video on a light box, no, you want it to play where it is. Um, poster, here you can select a photo, which is basically going to be the thumbnail for the video. And whether you want it sticky on the scroll, yes or no. Basically, that's going to mean as you scroll, it's going to lock the video, or when you scroll over, the video is not going to play. You've also got what is called structured data. I would recommend just leaving that alone. And then advanced gives you the more, the more in-depth spacing options, animation options, HTML, export, import, et cetera. Once you're done with it, you click save. So see here, I did not put in a video embed code and it's telling me I've got an error. It's not going to keep me from publishing the page, but it will tell me that there's an error there. So you see how simply dragging from this row, this three column, it gave me three tools to work in where this one only gave me one, which is where my collage is. All right, so you've got different options of being able to do that and setting things up differently for your website to make it look however you want. The good thing about this is you can put these in different formats throughout the entire page. You drag a row in, you want to put a module in it, you put a module in it. Now I've got a content slider here at the top that takes all the space. I've got my collage, and I've got my three different blocks. So you see how I can build and build and build whatever I want my page to look like. The other thing besides rows that you'll notice here is it says columns. You click down, you've got pre-built rows, which are geared towards particular things, pricing tables, team, testimonials, content, call to action, different things like that that may give you the perfect layout you need in order to be able to um, customize the look of your page. So just know you've got options to really go all in with the way you want your page to look and really reflect the brand you want to put forward. But one thing that really is helpful is that there are some pre-made templates. Now, the thing with a template is that if you, if I was to choose a template for this page that I've already got this stuff in, the template is going to overwrite everything I've already done. So that's why I encourage you going into a page, dragging, dropping, setting up, looking at the way everything works. The good thing is the templates already have some of these columns added in, some of these special little plugins added in, some of the little widgets already added in, and they're geared towards specific looks. But just know that if I've already done this type of work in this page and I click on a particular, it's going to say, do I want to append it to this layout or do I want to replace it? Odds are you're going to want to replace it. But if you want to add it to it, you click that. And what it does is it adds it below all of the stuff you've already done. Okay. You do have the ability to come back here and any of the stuff you've created, if you decide you don't like it there, you can click this little X, it'll remove it, verify it, it goes away. Any of them, remove. Okay. Remove. Okay, so you see you've got total control on removing and leaving. Even the ones where we put three pieces, I can remove one piece. These two stay, and it leaves this open for me to put something else in it. Okay, so also you'll notice that these three little ones are in a bigger one. This one's got an X, so if I decide I want to get rid of all three at one time, click the X, they're all gone. So now I'm back to just the template. Okay, so if you look at the way this template is, it's laid out so that you have a nice image at the top, you have a, um, a header or a catch line or whatever you want to call it here on that image. Then you've got your IDX search. This is your, this is where your 
uh, people going to your website can enter a particular city, state, zip, and they can look for homes. They can set minimum price, maximum price, number of beds, number of baths, et cetera, and institute, execute their own search, just like they were on um, Zillow or Realtor.com. If you scroll down on this template, you see that it's got, okay, this is where your information is going to go. Again, this pulls from your profile in Moxie. Um, you do have the ability, though, to come in here, click on the little, little widget settings, and modify any of this information. You can change the picture, change the name, put in information that may not be there, et cetera. You can save it. And then that modifies what's there so that it looks the way you want it to look. Now, remember, once you overwrite this stuff, it's not going to go back and sync with your profile stuff unless you reset it to defaults. And then it will sync that stuff back in. So if you notice here that you've got stuff missing from your profile, go to your profile, add it, and then come back here and make sure it looks the way you want it to look. You've also got a contact me button on here, which can be linked to a particular phone number or an email address uh, and go from there. Here are the contact button settings. You can set the colors for the button, et cetera. Then under advanced, again, you've got the margins so that you can position where everything is on the page. Animation, HTML elements, et cetera. One thing I do want to caution you about is adding animation may look cool in the moment, but you've also got to understand that animation can slow down your website loading. Uh, so just know that when you're putting in information, try to stay away from animation unless you really need it to highlight something. That way it doesn't slow down the load time, which tends to turn people off from your website. You can click save. And look at the various other things that are included on here. Any of this stuff is changeable by hovering over it, clicking the uh, settings wrench. You can make changes to any of this stuff. You'll notice they've also got little boxes in here because this is a three column row. You've got these little boxes on the side that you can actually draw, drop things into. Uh, if you want to put in icons or something like that. So say I want to put an icon in here. I come to my module icon, drag it to there. And then when I come over here to my icon, I can select my icon from any of these available options. So it gives you a large selection of available options. So, you know, I can put that in and right there's my little newspaper icon. You know, any, any way you can think that you want to use those, you can use them. Another thing you can do with those is you can actually set whether they're in the center of the box, to the left or to the right of the box, and that positions it differently. If you'll notice left, center, right, positions it differently, which may look better on your particular layout. You can also set the background colors behind these different things, et cetera, so that it matches your brand and your brand identity as you create your website. One thing I would recommend doing with the templates is coming in here to the plus sign, going to templates, clicking on them, replacing the existing layout, just so you can get a full size idea of what these various templates look like. That's a good way to decide, hey, I really like the way that looks. I think that really shows my brand well. I'm going to choose that one. You can come in here and customize any of these pictures any of the text, any of the stuff you need to, to really make it personal for you and your brand or your clients, your community, however you want to reflect that. You also notice you've got other boxes that are in here that are just currently not being used. But being able to look at each of these templates individually in a full size way really gives you an idea of the way you may want to present your page to people who go to it. Okay.
So that tells us about our modules, our rows, and our templates. We've got the MoxieWorks templates. We've also got landing pages, which if you click on those, you see that these are particular pages for landing pages. Now, if you're not familiar with what a landing page is, a lot of times if you've got an ad in social media, or if you're running a video on YouTube or something, you can have it linked to a particular landing page on your website. So that say maybe you're offering a free comparative market analysis for their home um, and they have to go sign up to do that. You can create a landing page for the sign up and when they click on the link in Facebook or wherever, it takes them directly to the landing page so that they can fill out the form to capture that lead information. If you use the contact forms that are built into Moxie, they take that information that they enter and it goes right back into Engage as a new contact. So that's a good way to capture contact information, forward them from social media into a landing page where they have to fill out information to get something free from you. Give, 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 ask. So you give them a free CMA, offer them a free CMA. In order to get that, though, they have to give you their information. So there's a trade-off there. Do they really want to know what their house is approximately worth in the market? Or do they want to just continue looking and not have that knowledge at hand? It's a good way to build a client base as well by linking to landing pages. Another thing they have are content pages. You'll notice these pages look more text-driven, have a little bit more detail and stuff in them. So this would be what is considered a content page. You'll notice this has got more information about uh, different things that you can classify, and, you know, images and text, et cetera. So just know that I would recommend coming in here, playing with the different templates, playing with the different landing pages, playing with content pages, going in there, doing your best to break it, build it, whatever you want to do. And then when you think you've got a grasp of how to do it, create your own page using the things that you've learned about. If you create something you don't like, you can delete it and start over, or you can create another page and leave this page created. And that way you may decide to come back to it later. So nothing that you do in here is ever written in stone. You can always delete. You can always come back to it later. You can always do things like that. The one thing I do say, though, is if you're working on a landing page or a content page or even a template custom page, make sure that when you go back to your pages, I'm going to click Done and Save Draft, and we'll go back to there momentarily. When we go back to our pages here on site pages, when I've got those custom pages I've created, if I don't want them being seen, I've got to make sure that they say hidden beside them. If they don't say hidden, that means somewhere on this menu, they're going to show up. So it's important to make sure that if you're still working on it, you leave it as hidden. So say you've created a page, you really like the way you've got it set up. Um, you can come in here, you can duplicate that page. Click duplicate, it creates a copy of that page. And that copy looks identical to the first one. And it says copy in the name. That's a good way to create pages that have consistency, but you change the information that is on each one. You can even come into the various pages and you know, say this title, you really don't really want to move this title or something to a different area. You can come in here and click on the four arrows up here to the upper left where it says move. You can drag that and drop it to wherever you want. You'll notice it put it over here. So even though this was a copy of that previous page, you can come in here and switch things around, make it slightly different, but it maintains a consistency in color and similar layout 
as you go through and create your web page or your website to reflect your brand. So just know you can move anything as long as it's got that little move. You can click and drag it wherever you want to move it to. You'll notice what I did here with the image is I drug it out of a sub container into the main page itself and it made it huge. So I can drag it back down into a sub container. It makes it small again. So you've got so much flexibility. Um, it's getting to the point nowadays where you can build almost as professional a site as someone that is doing nothing but coding in the background. And you can do it simply by dragging and dropping and uploading images, typing text, doing it that way, and never have one ounce of knowledge about how a website's created. So it's getting to the point where you can be present a very professional image using this type of drag and drop technology, and that'll work marvelously for your brand and making you look professional out in the marketplace. Are there any questions about what we covered tonight? That's the bulk of creating your custom page. And just know you can create those custom pages, put them anywhere you want in the menu. You'll notice down here this post 11 is hidden. If I say show, since it's over to the far left, what's going to happen? It's going to suddenly make that a menu option on my web page. Right there, post number 11, you see the way it did that? So just know that, again, if it's visible, somebody can click on it. And if it's not finished, it doesn't look good. So you can always hide it, make sure it says hidden, and you'll be protected from something going out that you're not ready to go out. Any questions about anything that we've covered? I see head shaking. No, that's a good sign. And just know if you have any questions, um, you can email me. If you decide that you want a custom site that you really don't know how to build or don't feel comfortable building, give me a, an email. Um, and we can talk outside of, of this process about me working and building it for you. Okay, that's something that would be extra on the side, but let me know if that's something that you wanted to do. But uh, just know that you've perfectly got the capability. Just go in there and be brave. Drag things out. Oh, this is gonna look great. Drag, 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 drag. Oh, that looks awful. Delete, delete, delete. You've got the way to do that. And that's one thing that's really great. And if you create a whole big page that you don't like, and you just say, you know, I don't want to see that anymore. I've got this delete button right here. I can delete that whole page. And all that junk I just did, it's gone bye-bye. So you don't have to worry about even going in and trying to fix it. Because eventually, inevitably, you will have a site page that you create one day. And you're going to get so far gone in it you realize, you know, there's nothing I can do to make this look good. I'm just going to delete the whole thing. That might be the best place to start or end sometimes and start over fresh. So just know you've got the ability to do that. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, um, like I said, if you need anything, if you have any questions that pop up after the fact or while you're working in it, please email me, um, support at theamericanrealty.tech and we will get them answered as quickly as possible. Kept it nice, short, and sweet for y'all tonight. So y'all have a good night. Thank you, you too. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too, thank you. Bye-bye.